What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bass, it's a business. Dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James. And we're engaged and we like to get scared together <laughs> in the hot tub. Guys, <laughs> it's time for another paranormal pool party. <laughs> and we're actually making it a pool party this time. Yep. A uh, hot, uh, hot pool party, hot tub party. Hot tub party, yeah. yeah. And we're going to talk about this movie that is about a group of people whose foundational beliefs are based in <laughs> asceticism and rejection of indulgence. And, uh, and now my phone's going off. <gasps> See? Ooh, okay. <laughs> I got, we, we're, you know, we're mic'd up in this pool. There we go. All right. This is why. See, this is what technology does to us. This is why we should all be Amish, yeah. <laughs> so we don't accidentally pull our wireless Sennheiser mics into our hot tub. Well, at least if that this happened, is indulgent. It, it, this is this is the dumbest. This is like the most <laughs> indulgent thing we've done on this channel easily. Yeah, I think. And but, I think it's so funny that's for this movie. Yeah, I know this movie sucks. <laughs> no, it doesn't suck. I didn't like this Okay, movie. we're going to have some differing viewpoints, I think. Yeah, it's kind of rare. Let there me, you go. I got to like wait. I got to like dry my hands before I grab the the notebook. Uh, should we do the housekeeping beforehand? Let people know this is the last podcast episode for a couple of months? Yeah, what he said. This is the last podcast episode for, I don't know, at least six weeks. Yeah, Eight until weeks. We're, we're taking all of January off for the yeah. podcast because we're getting married. And we're taking the rest of this month off as well. Yes, this is the last until we come back in February. Yep. Yeah, I don't have an exact date yet for when but. we come back, but after that we'll be married and well rested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's gonna be so much fun. Yeah. I'm so, so excited. Savor this. This is why we decided to go all out with the fucking pool party yeah. for this last one. And uh, enjoy it. I am. I mean, I'm just excited we can actually do a paranormal pool party. I know. We've I come like a long way were... from pool toys at our dining room table in the oh, apartment. Yeah, <laughs> I do wish we had some like pool floaties in here. Yeah. I feel like they released this new one just so we could do this. Oh, well, thank you, Universal and Blumhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this movie is written by Christopher Landon. Yeah. Who did all, all the Paranormal Activity sequels, or a lot of them. I think more, most of them. And more recently did Happy Death Day, its sequel, and Freaky. I, did he do Ghost Dimension? I don't think I don't he know. wrote Ghost Dimension. I don't know if he did or I not. also don't really have my... I can't look stuff up, and I feel very naked. Mm -hmm. uh, so... You have your phone back there, but it is a little scary to use the phone. I don't want to drop it, you know? Okay. I've got bourbon in me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was directed by a, the guy who did Underwater. Oh. Which was a pretty good movie. Yeah, Underwater was good. Yeah. Good creature design. Good Lovecraftian shit. Surprise yeah. Lovecraft, yeah. Where it's like that reveal of the scale of things really fucking you up kind of existential horror. Because that's... I mean, that's part of Lovecraftian stuff is just realizing, oh, I'm very small. And yeah. This, this entity doesn't even care that I exist kind of thing. That's a little bit what Underwater felt like. And I think he did a few movies before that, including one called The Spiral, which looked like a sci-fi horror film. So this is, I think, maybe a sports feature watched the film. I think we did a commentary track on The Spiral. No, are you thinking of the other Spiral that is also there's not so, the Saw Spiral? But then there's also Spiral that Adam Green did and that's like an old it's not i mean not old but there i feel like there's a bunch of horror movies called spiral all right so anyway he did one of them he did a he did a spiral yeah uh yep and so that was the director and writer and then oren pelly who made the original paranormal activity is just like a producer, a producer. here him and jason blum man that i'm so happy for that guy yeah like he really just made this low budget thing and gets to be an EP on this entire franchise. Like, man. Way to go, that's dude. The, living the dream, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we here in this hot tub are fans of Paranormal Activity, the franchise. Yeah. I would say big fans. I would say those movies have their detractors, and we are the first to jump to their defense and say, yeah. no, Paranormal Activity movies are great. Even the kind of bad ones are entertaining. Uh, thing with Next of Kin is it's a totally unrelated one because Ghost Dimension, uh, no, that was the 
six one. The fifth the one was marked ones. ones. That did tie in a yes, little bit. The end of that is absolutely crazy. Yeah, and it, then it, and then Ghost Dimension also tied into the first four. Because isn't that when we see Toby? Oh, is it? Like at the I'm, mix, end? I'm gonna mix them all up. Yeah, but I think both those movies. We see his are, like weird legs. Yeah, so I think both those other spin-off ones are standalone for the most part, and then in the end tie into the paranormal activity yeah. universe. That's not the case with Next of Kin. No. This is entirely separate, and that is honestly the first of many things I have against it. Uh, I know. I, I understand why they did a paranormal activity where it, it's like you don't need to watch another Katie one. And Hunter yeah, because and I, all the... I get that. It, I feel like franchises will get to a point where the studio's got to think like, all right, people aren't going to go see this if this is like the seventh or eighth movie in a franchise. And you got to know. Like, and that's only, why you drop the numbers. And only Marvel really gets away with that, I feel like, where you got to see everything else to see yeah. a Marvel. Yeah. And Chucky, you know? And That's Chucky, the thing is, yeah. The Chucky series, which we probably talk about too much, but, like, it, it introduced new things and yeah. then was still continuous with the previous installments. Right. Like, that's that's a fucking benchmark yeah. on how to do that. And But, yeah, Paranormal Activity up till this movie was doing that. Mm -hmm. But now we've got this kind of standalone alt parallel universe And almost. that's why, like, it's, it's the situation where... This isn't a paranormal activity movie. I was waiting for it to tie in, and I think it, we maybe had 20 minutes to go when I finally had to admit to myself, it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, it, it could. this could have been a VHS segment or a Grave Encounters movie or, like, any other found footage movie. It doesn't it just feel like a paranormal to, activity. I, it doesn't tie into anything. If it... If it weren't written by Christopher Landon, I would suspect it was a... We, saw this script and bought it because it was cool and we made it into a paranormal activity. Yeah. But Christopher Landon wrote it, so that's not the case. No, but again, it there's no reason for this to be a paranormal activity movie. Yeah. You know? I guess that the demon uh, that Asmodeus mm -hmm. is from the Book, Book of, of Toby. Toby. Tobin or Tobit or, Tobit. or, Tobit or but something. There's a, I mean, there's Toby is a... A yeah. guy in it, so... So they could retroactively book, tie it together. Paranormal Activity, Book of Toby, come on. <laughs> I don't know, we can, we can start talking about it. Yeah, let's get it. into it. Okay. We've got, it's, it's got the the hallmarks of Paranormal Activity in certain ways, like the the title cards with the dates. Yep. Always that same font. Same font, okay. That kind of typewriter font. Mm -hmm. The white on black. Courier or something? Yeah, like Courier, <laughs> courier. Bold. <laughs> March 2nd. 2021. We have our main character named Margo with a T. I feel like Margo is always, is there a silent T in there or not? Uh, I, think yeah. that's, I think we got a T. She's at a Denny's in Arizona <laughs> and she's about to meet a her first biological relative. Like she like, was kind of dropped off at a hospital by her, her mom. So she's never known her, her biological family. So she's finally meeting someone who shows up and his name is Samuel. Margo is with her friend Chris, and Chris is filming a documentary about this, um, and he kind of insisted on it because he's like, this is a cool thing. It'll be a cool story. Let's film this as it happens. As she meets her biological family. And right off the bat, there's a shot of Chris that is not from a camera in the universe. <gasps> yeah. It is an objective shot of Chris the cameraman. And, like, my issue with this is that it so half-assedly does this like, if you want to be half found footage, half not, that's cool. That happens sometimes. Do that. But, like, there are only a few shots in this whole movie that are objectively shot. It is hard to tell sometimes because the quality of the stuff they're <laughs> yeah. shooting with. Like, we're not... It, it's weird how now found footage, because at home, like, you know, pro, prosumer, is mm -hmm. that the word? Products are just... They look so good that it can be hard to tell. Because you can shoot and an actual non-found footage camera with a phone, and if you do it well enough, no one will question it. Right. So the fact that these people are shooting with their phones and cameras, it's like, there's not really a difference in quality. Yeah. As opposed to the first few movies where it's like, they're shooting with a fucking camcorder. It's clearly not a movie camera. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're right. It is hard to tell when it is or isn't in universe. And I actually do like that they introduced like drone shots. They're first headed to the Amish place where she's going to meet her biological family. There's an overhead shot of the, the car driving there. And you're like, 
oh, it's an objective shot in a paranormal activity movie. But then it cuts to him in the car controlling it. I do it. like That's when great. that happens. I like that. Like, there's, a, there's a moment where we first get introduced to this slow-mo that we see used a few times, which I don't... I don't love the few times it's used, but I, I think do. it's only used one more time after that. And that's the other thing. It's like this half-assed, like, they introduce the cool thing, slow-mo. Yeah. yeah. But I do like that there's a shot where it's this slow-mo footage of some of these these Amish kids. This takes place in an Amish community, which I enjoyed. I think it's fun. <laughs> and it's these, these Amish kids running around, and the, then it cuts to the cameraman showing them, like, see, this is slow motion. It's taking, like, a... a bunch of pictures at once. Yeah, it's still in yeah. universe and I like that. It's I do fun. enjoy that, but like I said, the sh- the objective shots are so few and random yeah. that I wish they would have just stuck to one stop. Sorry if you hear drag There's, racers. Yeah, sorry. Our street, we have people drag race up and down it, and that's probably why no one trick-or-treats on our street, because it's very scary. <laughs> yeah, thanks, assholes. Because, uh, yeah, there's the shot of Chris and the, the Denny's, a shot at the end when, like, the confrontation is going on, and then there is, a like, a montage of shots during a dinner scene where the shots get real yeah. artsy, and there are, like, overhead shots of people banging on the table, and, like... I like those shots, and if that were the only time it happened, I'd excuse it. But, like, those people weren't letting Chris, like, get these right. weird shots. But during their prayer. Yeah, their, so yeah. <laughs> it's just one of the many things that I think contributes to, like, a lack of cohesion in this movie. Yeah, I do appreciate they try to do something different, though. Because I, I think if you're going to make this a unrelated, like, an unrelated story, mm-hmm. I do think it's neat that they decided let's make it pretty visually different too and different a different style of found footage where it's kind of mixing things. Another uh, instance of like what you were saying where it cuts to like revealing that it is diegetic is the sunrise shots at the farm. It's like really beautiful sunrise shots and then it cuts to Chris being like I got some really good B-roll this morning. Yeah. And like I do like that because those shots are really nice. They're mm-hmm. they're re- it, lo- it looks good. It does look really nice. Yeah. I do think it's weird how as we kind of move forward with you know, just at home technology and stuff and the way we can all just film stuff on our phones. It looks amazing. The kind of stuff that found footage will still work for is is stuff like security cameras, which yes. is the thing that the original paranormal activity basically is, more so the second one. That yeah, that's the home what security like, mm-hmm. system. But it's funny how that's still gonna be because that stuff can't be high res. It's you know, because you have to have a ton of it mm-hmm. and you gotta store it. And I think that that also makes found footage so much creepier. Is yeah. that everything is really dingy and low res? And yeah, I think we we have a security system, and sometimes there's some really creepy shots, Ooh, like, like inadvertently. Like when the worst is when sometimes the motion alarm will get set off, and I'll go check, and there's a spider making a web right in front of the camera, and the way that it gets like blown out in the light is the creep. Well, hate- even before that, you'll get a notification of like. Uh, person lingering detected in the backyard at 2 a.m. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? Oh, it's just a spider in front of the camera. <laughs> or the thing that creeps me out the most is if someone earlier like came over during the day and the, the doorbell camera will take a little video of the person coming in. And I just forget. And I, I when I go to arm the security system at night, there'll be, it'll look like there's a person outside. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> but it's just from earlier and it hasn't refreshed yet. Oh, man. Yeah, so... Found footage, I've always thought, can be extremely scary. It scares the shit out of me. I think Mm -hmm. found footage is, maybe it's just, I think we talked about this before, maybe it's just the age we are where... Yeah, grew up watching it. Yeah. And it feels real to us. Yeah. So Samuel, this guy who shows up who is related to Marco, they're just cousins. And he's doing his rum springer. Yeah, rum springer. Which is, you know, if you're not familiar, it's the chance for Amish youth to go out into the world and experience life outside of that lifestyle and decide if they want to return I went or not. down a Wikipedia hole about Amish communities. Yeah. And because I find them fascinating. I mean, coming from Michigan, I know there, there's some Amish in Michigan, but there's a much larger population. In it. There's Ohio uh, and, and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is sure. where it's... That's I think that's where this, <laughs> I think that's where this takes place. I think so. Um, and that's all, they have their own dialect of German. That's Pennsylvania Dutch, which is kind of neat. And they speak German in this movie, which uh, is kind of cool. Lots of German, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, growing up in Michigan, there we have some family in Ohio, and they live pretty close to where Amish country is. I've been 
to Amish country a few times and I always loved going there as a kid because it just there's something as a kid it just seems so like there's they take a horse and buggy (laughs) everywhere and it's so cool they make all their own stuff and I don't know I always um I remember talking to some people because they they do it depends what community it is but some will do you know more tourist outreach where you can buy um stuff that they make Amish made stuff is like the best quality stuff by the way because it's just (laughs) It's artisan level, you know, like mm-hmm. woodworking and stuff like that. But I just always remember them being very nice and cool. So I was excited to do some more homework on Amish people. And I tried figuring out the difference between Amish and Mennonite. And it's so... Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Mennonite. It's so, like... Um, like, I feel like it gets really into the theology and just very much, like, schisms and stuff. Which one was in the movie with Tim Allen and Kirstie Alley? What? There's a movie, I'm pretty sure it's Tim Allen and Kirstie Alley, where they're, like, a married couple who are having problems, and I think they go and live in an Amish community. I don't know that movie. We'll have to find it and watch it. Yeah. During our break. That's how we should spend our break. Tim Allen marathon yeah (laughs) yeah so samuel tells them i've never been in front of camera before like a camera before ever and that's when we kind of learn he's he's amish and he's on his break and so they apparently met through 23andme Mm -hmm. they uh it it shows you who you're related to it's a genealogy website and he agrees to take him back so that she can meet other people in the family. Yeah, so he's going to help her with her documentary. Along the way, they pick up sound guy Dale. Dale, who I looked up. He's a comedy bang bang guy. I was about to say, he's a UCB guy, and, it, and everything, it shows. Made, everything made sense. I love Dale. I like him a lot. He's you know, a at lot first you're like, all right, who's this guy? Is he going to be an annoying funny guy or like funny funny guy? No, he's cool. He reminds he, me of Dave Grohl. He, he does look like a six foot seven version of Dave Grohl. Is this Dave man, Grohl not tall? I think he's tall, but six seven is. That's very tall. Is monstrous. Yeah. And Dale is extremely tall. Uh, I love Margot's reactions to him while he's talking as he's driving the car. I forget what he's talking about. He's talking uh, about how he has pants that oh, are those convertible a, pants where you can rip the bottoms. It of the makes it easier off. access for the ladies easy too. For the ladies. Like, she's just in the camera, like, "Oh my god, it's <laughs> so funny." I do all my pants are zip off, so it's you got pants. Oh, it's too hot out. Now you got shorts, baby. I'll show you when we get in. I'll throw the legs on, dude. It rules. Margot around here shows video to the camera, she's kind of playing something on her phone of her being left at the hospital, so we see. Which is creepy footage. It is creepy, it's security footage. Which we is, never get to see more of it. I know, I wanted to see, I wanted to, I wanted that to be a thing, like how in Lake Mungo, very scary found footage movie, where it's a reveal that there was something else going on in that clip that we maybe Or there was a, the another time. businesses nearby also has security footage that they find later that like shows more of something, you know? Oh, yeah. Just, I like security footage. It's scary. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Although, would she have... This is this is nitpicky and doesn't make or break anything in this movie, but I'm just curious. Would you be able to access security footage that old? If it wasn't pulled, I, I then? doubted it because it was from '97. Yeah, she was like, "I have this they security footage from the after hospital." Like yeah. a few months, I think. In 1997, it doesn't really matter. No, it's, fine. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We cut to it's March 9th, 2021. What am I? Re- my handwriting here. Say okay. My handwriting here is so bad because this movie is very jump scare heavy, and I just get I get. I'm so jumpy, and I like to plug my ears sometimes. Oh, you know what? It's not Pennsylvania. Buffalo, New York is oh, they're where they're in going. New York. Upstate New York. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, I like that. So this takes place during COVID. They would have started filming this after. So everyone in the airport and stuff has masks on. And I like that Samuel's mask is sparkly, and I think it it looks like he would have maybe borrowed it from someone, <laughs> and I, which I think is kind of a nice just costuming touch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they address it real fast, and then they're like, we all got tested, so we can just take these off. So. Yeah. But it is like, okay, it takes place in this year. Dale says he got COVID five times. Yeah, he's like, I got COVID five times. I'm fine. <laughs> which, it's funny how just stuff like that now 
like little lines like that, just because we've all lived through this together, tell you so much about a character instantly, like what kind of dude this is. Where yeah. he's like, I think I, I got it like five times. And there's just one for sure, but the rest I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But he's like, he says, like, my antibodies are just crazy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when they get to the Amish county, obviously they couldn't have told them ahead of time that they were coming, so they watch as Samuel is turned away by Father Jacob and the community. Thinking about this after, I was wondering why does this happen? I think it was part of a ploy to earn their trust. I I, I, I think it would have been also. discussed beforehand, because I did see people say like maybe this is a mistake, but I think it would have been like, okay, so we're going to come, you're going to turn us away, and then you'll come get us, and it'll make it look more reluctant. Right, and, and it'll make them want to be here more. Exactly, right? and it'll be less suspicious. So this, right. I think, isn't a plot holder or anything. I think it's just scheming and conniving. Because yeah. then they go to a hotel, there's a really nice shot of them uh, of Margot and Chris sitting, I, facing. I wrote that too, I love that shot. The it's, it's just a two really shot, cool. there's nothing like that interesting going on in it, but the way it's colored yeah. and the, I don't know, something about that shot. It's it weird how that me. stood out to both of us and it, it wasn't any of the crazy drone shots or anything, but just- it's Just a really nice shot. You know, oh. something about it. And I like, <laughs> I like their chemistry too. Mm -hmm. I like that they- Cause they're not boyfriend and girlfriend. No, they're- But like you get the sense of maybe they could be if they wanted to. If they, but they're, it just seems like they're good friends. Mm -hmm. And I think often that's something we don't get a lot of is just male, female friendship. Yeah, and, it's good to see that once in a while. Yeah, and I like that it's never, a will they, won't they thing mm -hmm. in this movie. It just seems like they really like each other, they care about each other, and they like making movie stuff together. Yeah. That's cool. I guess I just, I've had that relationship with so many, you know, because film school, a lot of dudes in the film <laughs> department, and I, those are relationships are really value or just it's male friendships. I know that there's not anything else that's being expected of this. It doesn't get weird, mm -hmm. you know. That's, it's nice. Yeah, and you know, on that note, the cast of this movie is great. They're all really, like, everyone in this is really good. Yeah, no and complaints there. A found footage is a hard type you, of movie you to You really sell. gotta be natural and, you know, can't seem like you're acting or else the whole conceit falls apart. They're in this motel. I love her jacket. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> you did Can like anyone that post a link for me to buy it? Because it's really cute colors. <laughs> this yellow kind of bomber jacket. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. They hear a creaky noise. And they go into the motel bathroom and uh oh, the window's open and there's a little kid jump scare. A little kid jump scare. Don't love this jump scare. There's a few jump scares in here that I I don't need. Yeah. Because I think the atmosphere of this thing is t perfectly fine and creepy at many points mm -hmm. and we don't need the jump scares. And it's it sucks because Paranormal Activity has some of the best jump scares. And so it's a bummer when it's just cheap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, kids like, eh, change your mind, you can come back with us. Yeah, but it's one it's an Amish. It's one of the Eli. It's Eli's or uh, it's Sam's brother, I think. Question mark? I don't know, man. One of the one of the Amish children. Yep. Walked all the way there, I guess. <laughs> sure, yeah. Or he took a buggy. I don't know. <laughs> They, so they they do go back to the house after they all change their mind. They're they're put in a room that they say is is so lovely, but it's uh, looks very dirty to me. This room looks like it's from a horror video game. It does. It looks like Outlast. It sucks. Yeah. The walls are. I can't tell if it's just mold or what. If the walls are dirty, dirty or if it's like this. If it's like soot or if that's just the like the way the wall looks. I don't want to sleep in there. It looks bad. All the bed frames are very just sparse. It's it's gross. It does look like a random room you'd walk into in Silent Hill or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. But they're all just like, wow, this is so nice. And it's like, oh, you kids are so polite. Yeah. Uh, so they, they're there now. They're staying the yeah, night. Yeah, they got the okay to have cameras and they, they brought a generator with them, it mm -hmm. sounds like. I mean, to it makes the batteries sense and stuff. because they knew they were going to an Amish. So I, because I was thinking, like, wait a minute, how are their batteries all going to yeah. survive? But they uh, thought of it. I love the interaction with some of the Amish youth, like the teenagers who. She's like, oh, this, uh, Margo's like, oh, this dress is so nice. Do you make this yourself? And then the youth's like, no, it's from Walmart. It's from, do you guys have TikTok? Do you guys have TikTok? <laughs> that seems like such an earnest question in a real life. I wonder what TikTok they would like. Like, what would you show if you went oh, to an Amish like community? Oh, what's like on their, for their page? Yeah, like if you, if, if an Amish teenager asked you, oh, do you have TikTok? And you could show them one that was pretty cool. What would you show them? You know what? Maybe they would appreciate the Rube Goldberg projects. 
Ooh. You know, the elaborate but yeah, like simple like machine that. type things because they're like, oh, these are concepts that we're familiar with. Just put in a ridiculous, kind of senseless, uh, elaborate way. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I like the <laughs> ones that people do where... I think they're like they're they're like changing outfits and stuff, and it's all these weird quick changes that are disguised by cuts. Oh, where they're, they're like really, they like pull off a sh- yeah, an outfit. Something like that would be pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Like just the magic of video editing. Yeah, is it's what I would in show. Camera them. editing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's when we meet Elder Jacob. He's like well, I feel like this is when we're introduced to him. We mm-hmm. kind of learn his name. He's the the head honcho here and the one who was not. Uh, originally excited about them being there. He kind of has like a Donald Sutherland vibe. Very much or, like, so, yeah. Even maybe like John Voight a little bit, like old John Voight. Mm-hmm. I could see. He's I just, think Donald Sutherland's the right call. Yeah. Like Hunger like Games. Hunger, I was going to say Donald Hunger Sutherland, Games, yeah. Donald Sutherland, for sure. Like scary, like evil Santa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like menacing <laughs> Santa. <laughs> In the middle of the night, they look out the windows and there's these creepy lights outside. They're kind of red. I think, I think they're, they're torches. I think they're just torch lights that are kind of the color. It's just wonky. But Going into the woods. They're creepy. They find out it's a hunting party. Or it is. They are told Allegedly, it is a hunting party. At 2 a.m. Hunting bear. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I wonder what this... We don't really ever come back to this. And I wrote it down because I thought it would come there's back later. There's lots that we don't come back to in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Margot remarks that everyone seems young. Well, when we learn about the curse and the the thing afflicting their community, I think they do mention that it affects the old first and then the young. Oh, you're right. So... Well, I think it's like the old and then... Oh, you're right. I think it is the old and then young. Yeah, because we we get the sleepwalking kid a little bit later, so he's being affected oh, by it. Oh, you're right. So I think right. maybe the old were affected and either hidden away or died from it. And that's why there doesn't seem to be a lot of them around. We do have some of them still around because that one lady's peeling her hand later. I like that. I like this. That's scare. gross. Yeah, it's, for, it's just nasty. I, I, I think I don't know if it if it's a if I would call it a trope, but I've seen it done a few times in movies where you have someone who's. I think that happens in Color Out of Space too. I think it was that movie oh, where, where she she's like cuts cutting the carrots and cuts her fingers. But she's cutting yeah. her fingers, mm. and that always gets me. It's so gross. Yeah. yeah. We get a tour of the barn. There's very cute animals. Got a lot of baby pigs. <laughs> That's James's favorite animal. It, yeah. I grew up and had a ton of uh, stuffed pigs. Yeah. Yep. Pigs are great. I love pigs. If they weren't a ton of work, I would love to own a pig. Because mm-hmm. they're very smart. Alexa Bliss had one. That's so cool. Yeah. <sighs> R.I.P. We don't have the proper... Uh, what pig can hang out in this hot tub? Yeah. This is a perfect pig sized tub. <laughs> this is, you know, this is gonna be a capybara type situation. <gasps> what if we get one of those, hon? Or those uh, hot tub monkeys. Uh, you know, owning a monkey, that gets into questionable ethics. They get a tour of this like loft thing in the barn. Every barn's got a scary loft. I feel like barn lofts are a thing in horror movies. Oh, for sure. Because all, all kinds of stuff can go down in those, and she almost falls down this hole. The bell. On top. It would lead right to just a bunch of very sharp farm equipment. The bale drop is what they... The bale drop? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right, that makes sense. That should be Bailey's finisher move. The bale drop. <laughs> <laughs> she has a sweet elbow drop. That's what you can call if it. she did, like, a farmer gimmick. <laughs> I don't know why. Came, I think I don't know if she's active or not right now. I think she's injured. She should come back with a farmer gimmick. That would be good. We meet Clara and Grace, who are two teenage girls who live here. And oh yeah, one of them's a TikTok. Yo, oh, okay, it's, okay. So Margot's asking them stuff about her mom, and her mom's name's Sarah, and she mm-hmm. would have grown up here. And she's asking, you know, what do you know about her? And the girls kind of look nervous and weird about being asked about Sarah. So they just say, well. Her mom hooked up with an Englishman, which in the Amish community means just anyone who's not Amish, which is true. I oh, that's that true? Up. Okay, yeah. I was wondering And they, they generally refer to anyone who's not. There's a lot of stuff in here that when I looked it up, I was like, oh, yeah, that's... Okay, so they at least did minimal research. It's cool, be, yeah, yeah. somewhat yeah. accurate. So that is a thing, but what it really, it's just she hooked up with a guy in town who is an Amish. Yeah, uh, an outsider. Right, exactly. Got pregnant. Everyone just gets real awkward on camera right now, and they basically say, oh, we have so much laundry <laughs> to fold. Uh, we have such ooh. laundry to fold. <laughs> so now it's dinner time, and we get this prayer... And that's when everyone's banging on the table and stuff, and it's pretty cool. And that's when you get these really, (laughs) it's just weird, canted angle. I can't think of what it reminds me of. It's Uh, Pilgrim. 
had, sure, had yeah. a similarly stylized shot dinner scene with a lot of like wacky angles and like quick cuts and stuff. And I loved Pilgrim. I loved Pilgrim. I would love to see a versus <laughs> this community versus the Pilgrim reenactors. Yeah, yeah, the Pilgrim cosplayers. That'd be so sick. You I know, don't... we were just watching The Forever Purge. And I only bring it up because that also had a cheap kid jump scare that we hated. Mm-hmm. And But when it got to the one guy who was like alpha and the big bad in the end, I was like, for a second, I thought it was the guy from Pilgrim. Ethan, oh. but it wasn't. This guy wasn't as cool as Ethan. Ethan, so Ethan more was, Ethan and stuff. I know. Please, thank what, you. What's that guy what up to? What is he doing, and how do we put him in stuff? Yeah, I mean, hey, we're possibly making a movie. Let's we'll, we'll <laughs> find, find a role a for way. Ethan. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Man, I'm sweating so bad. <laughs> I'm just sweating all my makeup off. <laughs> Oh, Lord, we're both going to be so dehydrated. I know, me especially with this fucking bourbon. Fuck. Hey, want to talk to you about our sponsor this week, Shudder. Our friends at Shudder are closing out the year with all kinds of treats. They've got Christmas classics like Black Christmas, which is one of my all-time favorites, and newer movies like Better Watch Out, which I do always recommend when someone asks for a good Christmas horror movie. I think that movie is so clever and so twisted. It has such a dark streak to it, which I, I you always love in a Christmas horror movie. They've also got new Joe Bob coming your way and the season finale of their docu-series Behind the Monsters, which is going to focus on Pinhead. Perfect for any burning questions you may have after watching all the Hellraiser kill counts. So if you want to try out Shudder free for 30 days, perfect for the holiday break, go to Shudder.com and use promo code DEADMEAT30. One more time, that is Shudder, S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com. Use the promo code DEADMEAT30. Shudder.com, promo code DEADMEAT30. Hey, last thing before we get back to the show, I just want to say how much we appreciate all the comments and feedback that we get from you guys. We'd love to learn more about you and what you're into so we can make creative choices and choose sponsors that are more relevant to you. Therefore, we have a survey set up that we'd love for you to participate in. The link is in the description of this episode, or you can visit https colon slash slash bit.ly slash deadmeatfeedback. Thank you guys so, so much. And back to the show. Oh, I guess their generator goes out because they need to charge their batteries at night. So I think it's Chris who goes out and it looks like the Friday the 13th game because he's yeah. going to fix this generator. Or dead by daylight. Yeah, just, yeah, it's just generator. Gotta fix the Jenny. And there's a creepy kid and he apparently is sleepwalking. Quote unquote sleepwalking. This kid's creepy. Honestly, I'm in love with this kid's <laughs> non I I don't think he says a word this entire movie except maybe some like mumbles but this kid is so fucking scary. We see him a couple times and he just looks like he's on another planet. He's just <laughs> staring into space and I don't know, man. It's good casting. <laughs> right around here, Dale one gets of, a makeover. He gets a makeover and, and he, yeah. he looks like the berries and cream he looks guy. Exactly it's like all the I can think about. Guy. He's got the little like cr- the little bowl cut with the bangs and the hat. It's everything. It's pitch perfect. Just like a very tall version <laughs> very of that tall guy. Very tall version, yeah. That's too powerful. That guy can't be tall. It's too much just physical. <laughs> berries and cream. Berries, berries and cream. And cream. <laughs> We'd all be so doomed. <laughs> we get some footage of Margot talking to this little girl who's playing with a doll and is like aggressively brushing its hair. This doll looks like... It's like when we were, when we were watching Christmas Evil and we both were remarking on how children's toys in Christmas movies are always hilariously generic yeah. and nondescript. That's what this doll feels like to me. It's just, like, it looks enough like a person, and it's got some hair on it that this kid can brush. And she says, oh, my doll's named Sarah. And she says, Sarah's still here. She doesn't like you. She doesn't li- I don't like you either. <laughs> So, uh, what? Margot's mom is still here? Whatever so, yeah, Margot now mean? begins to suspect that there is something uh, afoot here at this community. Because when she talks to Jacob about it, he says, yeah, she was a wildflower. She rebelled against our ways by going and uh, getting pregnant with a man from outside yeah, the community. Yeah, she also apparently tried to take her life a few times. Yep, uh, didn't work. And then when she got pregnant... What they do with a child out of wedlock is to give the baby to a married couple in the community. And Sarah, knowing that, decided that she would rather have her, have her child adopted, right. drop the kid off at the hospital. And then he says that she was shunned. 
And yes, that's also a, a thing. It's so not, shunned not being excommunicated, like kicked out. Correct. But rather, you still live there, but have to do everything by yourself. Right. You're basically just ignored, ignored by everyone. Yeah. And that, that sounds is awful. apparently a thing. I, I don't want to say like it's con- like always a thing. I think it's it's a thing that has happened and maybe is practiced occasionally. It yeah. My question is the people who shunned, why stick around? Because that's, I mean, why... I guess it's all you know. Yeah, I mean, you could ask that question of many types of people. Like, why? But when that's, you know, like, okay, you think someone, someone's like, I live in a city where I can't afford a home. And people are sure. like, why do you stay yeah. there? And it's like, everyone I know is here, you know? Like, this yeah. is where my life... It's it's hard. It's easier said than done. Yeah. Um, especially if you're Amish and you like how lonely would that be to then all right i guess i'm just gonna go to you know the outside world and oops now i don't know how to do stuff you gotta meet mavis to, beacon real fast at night margo hears thumping from upstairs and so she climbs up this creepy set margo just brazen in this movie a just, little too brazen maybe sometimes she should reach out and get chris to come with her yeah or something she uh, just seems unafraid of anything and this above them is it was mentioned where her mom lived yeah and it was mentioned that it was uh has since been just abandoned use for storage right so margo goes up there and she finds like a little hidden a tiny door behind a dresser no fuck tiny doors uh i feel very strongly about tiny doors and always fuck tiny doors they're scary nothing good's behind them doesn't she find it after a drawer falls out she, of the dresser yeah so what it is is she opens up a dresser drawer there's a little box in there that she takes letters out of mm-hmm. and one of them is a letter written by sarah that's like i'm i'm leaving your sicko cult we don't yeah. get a very long look at it but we no. see sicko cult which i do like that it gives you just enough time to read that's all you need but then she's distracted by that from the drawer falling out I right? think she, I, I can't remember if she pulls it out or not but it's like she this drawer comes out and she realizes when she looks through the space where the drawer was there's a door back there so then she pushes the dresser out of the way yeah and goes in there I, this is this was the scariest part of this whole movie for me is this I mean attic. it's a scary segment and we're gonna get another scary setting with the the hole in the ground oh no I lied the yeah, hole is the I was scariest gonna say, I, that forgot. Didn't sound right, I think huh? I just suppressed that but uh, I think with both of them, there's not enough of a payoff. There's, yeah. You know? It's a lot of tension that doesn't... Kind of fizzles away. Yeah. As opposed to, like, with the marked ones, they have the camera being lowered down the uh, air duct. Yeah. To be a part, and that it's so pa- scary. has a payoff. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, it's so scary. So she goes through the tiny door. It's a creepy room. There's a painting on the wall that's kind of vaguely demon-shaped. And I did keep forgetting we were watching a paranormal activity movie. So then I then realized, oh, wait, there has to be something supernatural in this because it's paranormal activity. Yeah. So it, it, does, it did take a lot of guesswork out of what was going to be the big thing here. Like, mm-hmm. what's going on here? Is it just a regular old cult? Nothing supernatural? But no, it has to be. It because, has to be, yeah. Yeah. So I do like this little this this scare, though. She hides under this bed in this this hidden room because she hears footsteps. Yeah, Jacob yeah. is coming in. And there's there's no one in that bed. No. But we see someone get into it. But, like, she... there's no fucking payoff. What is that? Yeah, I do have issues with this whole... Because there's that, and it, then there's the face the outside face, the yeah. window. Because this whole sequence is really creepy, but then by the end, like... What was that? What was that? Because, yeah. you know, spoiler alert, her, her mom is possessed by a demon and... Uh, in, down at like, the bottom li- of a hole it, in the church. She's Gollum and lives in a hole. Yeah, and that's the supernatural thing. That's the the you know the big scary reveal. Right. What is this like ghost shit that's never brought yeah, up again? Yeah, because the whole the whole point is I, there's like a line of of women mm-hmm. in this village that they all are vessels to this demon. So to that contain it. it's very much like a. Oh man, what's that short? What's that short story where it's the, the kid, it's like a kid kept in isolation and like tortured so that everyone else living in this town. It's an Ursula. Oh. Kayla Gwen story. I forget what it's called. It's like. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Vaguely though? familiar. It, it reminds yeah, yeah. me of this where it's like we keep this w- one, one person, woman. Yeah. And it is always 
that woman and her future descendants. So it's always a woman related to this bloodline. And that's why they wanted Margot back. Which is also a thing like, what do they do after Margot? She doesn't have a kid. I think they find ways to get her pregnant. Maybe, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Oh, that's what I was. I, I meant to say is, so if, if the, these women are being used as kind of containers for this demon and the whole point is that they are keeping the village safe from the demon, how is it that... I'm assuming this demon is able to like be doing stuff up here and it makes no fucking sense. Yeah. If anyone has answers, I would love to know. I I mean I glanced at like Reddit threads about the movie and as far as I could tell, no one knew any explanation for the bed or the face in the window. Yeah. Everyone was like, what was going on there? And no one knew. Yeah. So. And also when she gets kind of, there's a scene later where she gets grabbed by something. Yeah, and then she like appears possessed and catatonic, but then that goes away af after like she's rescued from down there. It's... Yeah, like it, is she good? Or did she get possessed and we are bringing... Um, I think if, if she was possessed though, we would have a tease at the end of like... Yeah. The demon escapes. And no, instead we see like chaos because the demon is no longer bound to them yeah. at the very end. But, the, you know, that's why I don't like this movie. It feels like the scenes were written one at a time without... As set pieces kind of thing. Yeah, without a without regard to like the overarching narrative sense that sure, they should have. Sure, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. That, yeah. It's give me, give, just give me Katie and Toby. Call it a day. Um, I'm happy. <laughs> I know. I was really missing Toby. <laughs> Although I do think it's funny that by the end, spoilers, the demon is in Samuel's body. And Samuel's just a dude who a has shirt. no shirt. <laughs> yeah. He's lost his shirt at some point during this end sequence. So we've got just... Like a rowdy musician. A guy. Yeah. And I, I love that that's ultimately what all these demons end up becoming in paranormal activity. Is they end up just having to be dudes named <laughs> Sam or Toby. Oh boy, so they're shooting some drone photography and they notice on their drone footage that there's a creepy church. Like a mile away. Really, from the rest like of the, too yeah. far away. It's not a, a good distance if you're gonna be regularly attending mass. There. And that's where they determine those people with torches that night went out to. Sorry, there's a plane. Hold for plane. They walk over to this church and it's the door is barred and it says, so weit nicht weiter, which means this far, no farther, but they can't reach it. They, they're that Garfield meme. Like, oh, I wonder who that's for. <laughs> they can't read German. Does not apply. So they break in. They pick the lock. They're about to break in, and then Jacob's oh, like, no, right. no, Jacob's, no, no, yeah, Jacob. get the fuck out of there. Let's go have food. I forgot that they didn't get in yeah, the this first is just, time. This is just a tease. A little tease. Because after this is when they sneak out at night, and they see the two-headed goat being born. Yes, okay, yes, okay. Two-headed so, goat's dope. Two-headed goat, really cool reveal. Wish we had more of that <laughs> business, because it's pretty neat. Yeah, that's like, it's just a lot of sequences of like, they get woken up at night, they go out and see something weird happening. Mm -hmm. So then during the day, they're like, all right, we gotta investigate, because one of the old ladies there also said it's starting to spread, so what the fuck's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, so now this thing that's afflicting them has afflicted their old, is afflicting the livestock, afflicting the children now, so yeah. obviously, uh, and you know, we've already talked about the ending and, and the reveals and such. I imagine this is because the demon has been breaking down Sarah's body to the point where it's affecting other people. Yeah. And that's why they need this new vessel. Right. Uh, in the form of Sarah's daughter, Margot. Correct. Yes. So that all, that all tracks. <laughs> March 13th, the elders leave to go do stuff. I'm not really sure where they go at this part. Like, where are they going? They all kind of leave. Yeah, she's like, oh, everyone's leaving. They're just leaving Sam to watch over us. Now's our chance. Sam is our babysitter, yeah. So we'll distract him by sticking Dale on a horse, hitting the horse's butt, and making that just, like, go deal with that. Yeah, they have uh, horse adventures for it's, Dale. Even though, like, if Sam just turned around, he'd be like, wait, where are they going? Right, yeah. W whatever. They go back to the church, Margot and Chris now yes. at this point, just the two of them. This is when they break in. Yes, they break in. They find paintings on the floor depicting, uh, what's his name? Asmodeus. Asmodeus and some just... Some heinous looking stuff going on. And the church has no pews, which is weird. No pews. You... It does have an altar underneath 
they find a hatch after yeah, they move they the push altar the out altar of the way. Aside they realize the floor is hollow and they open up the floor and it's. Th- I do love this. This is cool. <laughs> it's a deep ass hole in the floor, which we want to know how they did. How did they film this? And actually, uh, Dead Meat executive assistant Ben, I think, is friends with Margot's actor or knows a way to contact her. I think so. We need. So we to might have to hit her up and ask. Yeah. Shit. I should have done that. It's it's fine. We watched this yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. It's this really deep hole and they throw a rock down it and that rock falls for a long time i uh. and then margo you know this is one of just a dumb horror movie thing where it's like we have one shot of this we, we gotta ha- go down here we have to go down here and i don't understand why put a camera on a rope i think because they had already they had done and, that and, and ones, so yeah. they put margo on it because there is a harness in the barn they yeah. find it when they they don't realize what it's for then they put together, oh, it's so someone can be lowered down into this hole. So they stick a camera on Margot's head and lower her down into I, the hole. This sequence made me Like, this is scary. Upset. Yeah, because they keep showing, like, they pan up with the camera to the room and then down into the hole. Yeah. So I don't know how they Some did it. Some kind of, yeah, visual trickery here. Yeah. It's very cool. But basically she's just lowered, gets almost to the bottom, sees like some bones and stuff down there. Yeah, sees there's a lot of crosses, crosses on yep. the wall of the cave. But then she's pulled back up before, oh, she hears like noises, like growling. Growling So sounds, she thinks something's yeah. down there, but nothing too much comes out of it right now. Yeah, there's not like a, a like a scare payoff or anything. Yeah. It just is creepy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now the next day, because all the elders are gone, this is when she goes uh, snooping through Elder Jacob's room, and she okay. opens up a closet, and there's just like a laptop, yeah, and flash drives and all kinds of stuff. With I like that he uses his real name to log on to his account, his uh, Windows account. Yes, it's like Jacob, whatever. I do think it's, and he, I don't. Think he has a password yeah either. probably because it's a private thing so why bother i do think that's very funny that like yes he has all this stuff so clearly he's some kind of mastermind but he's still an older amish <laughs> dude and you know he's not gonna be some elite hacker he yeah. doesn't have a pat he just has the like kind of generic microsoft background and mm. everything it's very good i was trying to to deter- I was trying to determine if it was an older version of Windows, like not 10. That would be Like, it should be Windows 7. I don't know if it is, but, like, it should be Windows 7. Is that, like, mid-2000s, like, early? No, mid-2000s would be, like, XP. Yes, XP! It should be Windows XP, yeah. Yeah. Where it's the bright, (laughs) where it's, like, the blue and green. And it's kind of Uh, bubbly, almost. yeah, Yeah, that's... Yes, I think that would be the funniest option, for sure. When she looks through his email, that's how she realizes they intended for her to be there this whole time yeah. her and uh jacob and sam and sam yep were, was a they whole planned conspiracy. the 23 and me meet up they mm-hmm. plan to lure her here yeah they come in and, and find her or something she gets attacked and thrown to the ceiling and the next morning chris and dale find her like unresponsive and catatonic which is yeah. another thing that's never explained it's a weird because it looks like some kind of creature grabs her from the room upstairs something but it almost seems like, is she possessed now? No, I don't well, think so. Yeah, the next day she's like leaning up against the window and is drawing a perfect circle in the fog on the window. Yeah. And there's blood in on her bed, bed and... Some doctor says it's just a heavy menstrual cycle. I wonder if that was like the... An impregnation? An, an, the demon impregnation? Possibly. Because kind then... Of Rosemary's Baby type thing? A little bit. And that could also... I'm Again, I'm shocked that that wasn't called back to by the end as like a sequel tease. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know. But since she is obviously not doing well, Chris and Dale decide, all right, maybe it's time to get out of here, but our van's battery is dead. Yeah, so and they... They hitchhike. They hitch a ride with town. the mailman. Oh yeah, the mailman's cool. I mailman's like the like, mailman. I was afraid he was going to be a secret bad guy. Me too. But he's just the mailman. He's, he's like, just... I've been delivering mail for what, like tw- thirty years or something. Yeah, and the Baylors, which is what the the, the people are called, that the the Baylor family. Yeah. I don't know the Baylor farm. They're not Amish. Like, I know lots of Amish. <laughs> Senator, I know Amish people. <laughs> you are no Amish person. <laughs> I just wonder, like, what does he mean by that? Because they pra- they practice. Well, he says that the other Amish people say that they're not Amish. And the other yeah. Amish people might know, having presumably gone and talked to them for trade and such, 
and then maybe dug a little into their beliefs and been like, that doesn't sound right. I think it might just be a, maybe the rest of the Amish community around them just thinks that they're, mm, they're weird. <laughs> well, yeah, because they're Satanists, turns out. As mm-hmm. Chris and Dale, they get into town, they get to an auto store, they buy a battery, and they're like, can we use your internet? The guy's mm-hmm. like, yeah, just don't look up any weird shit. <laughs> yeah. Which is... Then they immediately look up weird shit. <laughs> yeah, they look up demon shit. Are they are they Satanists or are they just like I guess oops, Satanist our probably village isn't. has a demon problem and we got to do some weird occult stuff to deal with it? Yeah, that's probably more right. I think one of the characters say, "Oh, I knew they were Satanists yeah. or something." But yeah, they Google Asmodeus because that was written on the floor of the church, and they get a cool GeoCity site, <laughs> Angel Fire. About it's a story about this village in like Norway or something where it's it's the demon that is. Uh, there's a village has a demon problem. They then trap the demon in the body of a white witch, and then that woman's like descendants. It's like the demon passes through all the female descendants, and it keeps the village safe. Yeah. So, so is are that, our characters descendants from this witch, or is it just like a oh this similar thing happened in a village? I'm not sure. All I know is that once learning this, Chris and Dale decide not to call police or anyone for help. They're yeah. just like, we'll go back and try to fix it ourselves. Yeah, they get their car battery. Dale goes to deal with the battery while Chris goes to the church because he can't find anyone or Margot. And sure enough, uh, she's down that hole. Yeah. Jacob attacks him. Yeah, Jacob has a gun. He's oh, in the yeah, corner that's right. with a gun. Mm-hmm. And he kind of has to talk Jacob down. But no, then there's a Jacob fight. <laughs> Jacob fight. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Jacob gets pushed down that hole. And when we see his body, it's like broken and high up. Dude, literally. He, I literally wrote, my God, he's broken <laughs> and high up. Yeah, Jacob, RIP, he is just smashed in half. Yeah. It's gross. It's his pretty feet cool. are up by his face. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, Chris is down there by himself. Yes, he finds Margot. And, he, okay, Margot is, <laughs> she's like laying down. And there's this, this older lady performing some fucking scary right on her. Yeah. And dude, the way that Chris just fucking tosses this lady aside, he basically like a pushes off. her face it, and just pushes her to the ground. The physics of it are just so funny. He just, she just goes so limp, like <laughs> just no regard at all for this lady, and it's very funny. Yeah, and last we saw Margot, she was like catatonic or possessed or something, but yeah. now she's able to get up. He and, kind of snaps her out of it. Oh, and then earlier, I just want to bring it up. Uh, earlier, before she found the laptop, she was trying to wake up Chris and Dale, and they just wouldn't wake up. Yeah, did I, they drug them or I something? Assume That's they what were I, I figured they they were just drugged. Well, give us a shot of like I don't know. The poison, a bottle with a skull and crossbones on it. <laughs> like in a happy birthday or bloody yeah, birthday, yeah. For sure. And uh, by the way, there's also a golem down here. Yep, it's Sarah. It's Sarah, Margo's yeah. Mom. Which we don't realize at first, but I think, I mean, I put it together after mm. a little bit. I yeah. realized, oh, wait, that's probably just where they've been keeping her mom this whole time. But yeah, it just, it, it has very um, vibes of Wreck. Yeah. The, oh, sure. The, the final attic. monster. And there's, What's a bummer is this creature, quote unquote, because it's not really, a, I mean, it's, it's a possessed lady. Um, kind of like Wreck also. Wreck is also like, it's a possessed woman. Mm-hmm. It's not really like a creature, just, you know, she's been through some shit, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, the first couple shots of it, genuinely upsetting to look at. It just, she's really creepy. Her, the physicality of it's creepy. But then we see a lot of her, and that's a bummer. Yeah. We just see a lot of Gollum running around, and but it, and it, it didn't help that it did remind me of Wreck, which the end of that movie, the first time I saw it, I didn't sleep for a week. That final shot of the woman in the attic, like Is that I Christiana Madero or something like that. Yeah. Yes, Played I. By Javier Botet. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't rewatch that movie until like a couple years ago when we watched it together because I was so scared to see that scene again. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, Chris and uh, uh, Margot make it up out of the cave on the winch system because Dale, they hear Dale up there. So yes, he, he pulls Dale them up. Dale helps them. But then uh, Sarah follows them up there. Yeah, she, she, just, she could hole. just crawl up that hole, I, I guess. guess. Well, the rope was still down there. I imagine oh, if the rope had not sure. been. 
And also, she was chained up this whole time, so I think without the chain, she's got demon strength. That's another objective shot, is when she, like, lunges at them, and then it shows the chain uh, growing taut and catching her. Oh, yeah, and when she falls and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Again, just the random out of found footage shot. Um, yeah, for sure. Then they they run out of the barn, Sarah's chasing him, there's a blip of the slow-mo. Oh yeah, when Dale gets killed? Yeah, it, it, it happens Dale. like once and then it happens again more extensively when Dale gets tackled by Sarah, yeah. RIP. Yeah, I do, I do love all of the footage though where they're running around and it's shaky cam and there's snow. There's something about the yeah. snow and the way that it picks up light that is very creepy to me. I like that. And you see just glimpses of Sarah in the background, and there's some really cool shots. I right like that here. this is a cold, snowy setting. Yes, I think more horror movies should be set in snowy because snow is very scary to me. It, it's, it's very it, isolating. It's, yeah, it muffled the way it muffles sound. The lodge, I think, did a great use of uh, yeah. snow. They, they wind up in the loft of the barn. Yeah, they kind of they kind of bar themselves in the barn and I mean someone's going down that hole. Like we we saw we the hole earlier. Right away, yeah. yeah, for sure. Sarah bursts in. I mean this is when we officially learn that it's Sarah because mm. Margot is like, hey, it's it's, it's me, mom. mom. Yeah. Don't you remember me? And they have a moment where it's like maybe, but then... And this, this is another objective camera shot of, like, yeah, it's like shot, over the it's shoulder. Yeah, it's a shower her shot of her and her mom. And, at, like, right as she's doing this very emotional, like, don't you remember me? Then she just fucking pushes Sarah. <laughs> and it looks like Gollum falling into Mount Doom. It's like he's going right into the fires with the ring. And yeah. it's this, this little ragdoll physics Gollum. Just... Yeah, and she goes into a hay baler, I think. And yeah. just gets chopped all yeah. to hell. Yep. So oh, now man. the... The body containing the demon has been destroyed. Yeah, so now it's just demon time. That's what I do like this a lot. This really creeped me out. The bell starts ringing, oh, but it's yeah. speed, it starts speeding up. I like that. I did find that very creepy, mm-hmm. and I really liked it. Buckle, let's go. Buckle now. Come on. Now. Now. Let's go. So, yeah, Chris and Margo are trying to get out of there. They get to the van. They realize, oh, Dale has the Dale's keys. Dale's body has the keys. So we gotta go back to that. And then after they get the keys, they come back and just everything chaos. is fucking chaos. Dude, it's Amish chaos. There's a guy on fire. There's <laughs> a guy with no eyes. There's a lady with a sledgehammer. There's just Samuel running around, no shirt on. I don't know where his shirt He's went. He's ready to fight. <laughs> yeah, just we're just mud wrestling. Like, it's crazy. It's nuts. All the animals get slaughtered. Oh, yeah, like, all the cows are beheaded and shit. Wild. But they're able to escape all that chaos, yeah, get in the very, car. Yeah, very Texas Chainsaw vibes where Sarah... She's, like, laughing uh, or not Margo. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Margo is turned around, and she's kind of screaming and laughing. And I, if it's not an homage, I, I would thought be it, I thought the exact same thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we get cop dash cam footage. Yeah, because Chris and Margo have escaped. Yeah. They're gone, and now some cop Which dash I was cam kind footage. of excited about the cop cam yeah. stuff, because it's, it's just such a crazy sequence. This first cop gets here, hears a crying baby, follows the baby noise into the barn, and we just see Sam turned around, and he slowly turns around, and we realize it was him making the baby crying sound. Yeah. And then um, this demon's powers is apparently it can just make you shoot yourself if you're holding a gun. Yeah, it's like a, a bird box. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes you kill yourself. Yeah, so He does then, that to a couple of cops. The, the first cop gets there, kills himself. Then we cut to, like, another cop showing up, and the exact same thing happens. It's just, like, it just is this weird... It's like, how do you beat that? <laughs> you can't. No, it's... it's. You try to confront Sam, he just makes you kill yourself. Yeah, I just think, like, it's a cop getting there calling for backup, and then that cop gets there, and then call... It just feels yeah. like it's this endless It's like a Return of the Living Dead. Like, <laughs> yeah. send more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's... Totally, what this is. What we just have Sam gets in the car and he drives, and drives away. away, and that's, that's the it. end credits start playing over Sam. Yeah. And I just wrote Sam, meet Toby. <laughs> and that's our sequel. I want a Sam and Toby fight. Man, I just want a real paranormal activity movie. I said a real paranormal activity. Yeah. Give me perfection. Yeah. What would you, if you. Had to come up with a setting oh, or like a premise. What would you? Some, if, if I had an answer for that, I'd make that movie. I just try to think of what kind of like conceit would be cool that hasn't been done or overdone yet. 
it's tough with found footage. It is, yeah. Because a lot of the stuff has been done before, you know? Yeah. There are, you haven't seen Hell House LLC yet, have you? No. That one's a solid one. Yeah. That one's got some good stuff in it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll get back to you, but I'd, I'd, I would want to expand the what story about, a little like, bit like C-SPAN? What? Like C-SPAN is always streaming, like it's 24-7. <laughs> like my, when I couldn't sleep when I was a kid, my mom would let me watch C-SPAN and I would fall asleep. Okay. And maybe like something like that. That's getting big, hon. You get paranormal activity in the fucking, in Congress. That's going to have implications. That'd be so cool, though. <laughs> like, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, Next to Kin was not it for me. Uh, yeah. I wanted to like it because I like the franchise. I like Christopher Landon. He's a cool guy. Um, yeah. I, I like think, all the people who made it. I just... I think after discussing it, I think I just was maybe a little too excited that it, I was watching a paranormal activity movie that I yeah, hadn't seen. Exactly. And the fact that it was set in an Amish community, which is cool. That's fun too, And yeah. it just looked cool. And I think there were a lot of things that influenced how I felt about how it worked. And as we're talking about it, I'm realizing just on a structural level, a lot of things don't work. Just a lot of loose but, ends, a lot of like, what was that all about? Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's fine. Check it out if you want. It's found footage. Mm -hmm. It's got some creepy moments. Yeah. And uh, it's only 90 minutes or whatever. What are you doing? Yeah. It's the holidays. You got time. I I still, ha like, I was entertained. I don't regret watching it. No. I rarely regret watching it. I don't think movie. I was bored. It was, like, I, I enjoyed Yeah. Myself. I wasn't, like, checking my phone or anything. It was more of a matter of when it was done. It was like, yeah. well, that was... The only reason I wanted to check my phone the whole time was because I wanted to read about Amish. <laughs> <laughs> I just was, I was just so fucking curious. Just because I remember I asked you, like, where... Like, why the level of technology that they are at? Oh, yeah, where they I draw do, the line. I do think it is... It because, is, like, they use horse and buggies. Uh, well, yeah, like, me they have met things made of metal. It's like where... I guess that's not technology, though. No, that's like it's, it's more... Materials. What it is, is it's the distinction. It's not just, like, technology. It's more the distinction of, like, does this make your life easier kind of thing? And also different Amish sects disagree on what counts. So some of them use like tractors or, you know or things with that with oh, they're like gas like powered combustion yeah engines? and some don't because oh. the whole thing is it's it's about the the focus is on the like benefit of communal work and the way that when you're all working together for each other that uh, it's not about the individual it's about the collective it's very interesting to me yeah yeah I would like to learn more. Maybe I will watch a PBS documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and with Amish and PBS, that's the note we'll go out on for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. If I had a TV out here, I would be watching some Amish documentaries right now in this hot tub. They would frown upon that. Huh? <laughs> no, it would be the, <laughs> the most indulgent bullshit I could ever do. Yeah. I know. I am sweating my ass off I'm now. so sweaty. We got to get so out of here. It's a good time to end this. And uh, now I think we're about to take a, in my opinion, well-earned rest Yeah. to recover Yeah. and uh, just get our heads in the right space, man. I just don't take for granted any day how, you know, relatively speaking, even though, yeah, our last couple of years were just like everyone's weird, confusing, scary. We've been so lucky, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact that we're able to take this break is a blessing in itself. Yeah. I mean, granted, most of the past four years, weekends weren't a thing, you know, yeah. we have, but regardless, the fact that we're able to just like, I plan on watching lots of just movies. Yeah. Just watching lots of movies and playing video games, which I haven't been able to do the past four years. Yeah. And now I'll have the time to do it. But the fact that I'm able to take that time is is an honor and a privilege. So thank you to everyone for, yeah, for watching and Sticking around that. with us and... Yeah. Letting us do stupid stuff like film in a hot tub. <laughs> it's probably going to be the loudest audio of all time. I know, RIP headphone users. Yeah. But I think it'll be worth it because I think that when we come out of this, we'll be able to do new things that are hopefully exciting and uh, fresh. Yeah, I have all kinds of ideas yeah. that I don't want to talk about because then I feel like when you put ideas out there, then often that means you'll never do them. Dude, at the beginning of this year or at the end of last year, I tweeted that 
2021 is for sure the year that I will finally start the They Might Be Giants podcast with Gressel. Oh, that didn't happen. That year's about to end, but you know what? I think maybe with the break, I can make it happen. Yeah. So if you, for the three John and John fans out there, you have that to look forward to. <laughs> all right. Well, next time we all see you, we'll be married. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that. We had our first dance lesson yesterday. Yes, we did. For our first dance. Yeah. It's to As the World Falls Down from Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, check out Dead Meat. We'll be around. Uh, you know, the socials will be posting at Dead Meat James on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah. I'm at Carebeck, C R E B E C C, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want, Merge, I will have a link in the description. Link is on the screen. I am working on reacquiring a certain domain that will direct to merch more easily. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we'll get more merch stuff up when we can, probably during the break. Yeah. And don't forget, just because there's a break, uh, January 7th, I believe is the date, will be our Scream video coming out. Oh, yeah. The Scream yeah. House. That video is fucking dope. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. We're not just going to disappear. We'll yeah. be around. We'll just be doing different stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. In the meantime, I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. <laughs>